Your eating is not the cause of you feeling unhealthy and bad and of you being fat. It's you being fat that triggers you to eat unhealthy and to eat bad. Keep this in mind throughout the whole video today. As a kid, I had many struggles, but two of them were obesity and YouTubers who didn't tell me how to actually fix my problem. They were in their intros of their fucking fancy edited YouTube videos and they simply didn't come to the point. They tried to sell me some bullshit and therefore I'm not going to be like them. We're going to come right to the first point, which is eat more fat. If you are trying to lose body fat, you need to eat more fat that it is in food. Let me paint this picture in your head. I guarantee you 30 girls will message you each month. So you'll have roughly one girl in your inbox every single day who wants to date you. How comfortable will you be with denying one of those women? Very, very comfortable. Because you'll have a new one on the next day. Now imagine I tell you one girl will message you in your entire life. It's a little bit extreme, but let's just imagine it. You will simp for that woman and you will probably mess it up because you're very needy with that woman. Now, let me tell you the same analogy with fat. Your body needs fat to be healthy. Fat is a very important thing that keeps your organs working, that gives your heart power, that makes your blood work, and that regulates hormones in your body. It is a very important energy building block that you need into your, in your life. It also is responsible partially for building testosterone. Now I don't tell you to eat a whole block of chocolate, uh, of, of butter, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am telling you to increase the amount of fat you eat. If you are trying to lose fat, you have probably heard the lie of don't eat fat. But as we just discovered, if your body has no fat, he will store the fat that you give him. If you give your body fat every five days, he will store that fat and you will gain weight. You will gain body fat. Maybe you'll lose weight because you're on some crazy low calorie, 500 calorie a day diet like I used to be. But you will gain body fat, you will become skinny fat if you don't eat fat because your body will store fat if you don't give it the right fat. That's the first point, so eat more fat so your body is actually comfortable with releasing some of that fat. How do you eat more fat? You drink milk, raw milk, very important that you drink raw milk. Regular pasteurized milk lowers your testosterone and therefore increases the amount of fat you store. Because imagine the caveman with low testosterone. The caveman ancestor, or your, your ancestor with low testosterone, what did he do? Did he conquer and battle low? He laid at home. And if he eats something, what is his body gonna do? He is gonna store it, and that's what we want to avoid by all cost. So think about everything you can think about to make your body think to not store fat. And how do you not store something? You pump out as much as possible, which brings me right into the second point, which is training. You need to train hard and you need to train full body. I see people in the gym who are fat, overweight, people who are metabolically sick, and I see them train abs, and it doesn't make sense. If you want to lose weight, you need to train your legs and your back. Those muscles are going to, by way of doing full body exercises, with which you need much technique, much focus, and in which you will sweat your ass off, they will release fat. I recommend doing squats. And listen, you can say, I can't train legs three times a week, but you need to. If you want to, you can just do five sets of squats three times a week, and you will lose fat. Of course, you might have stiff muscles, you might have sore muscles, but as soon as they're not sore again, and you need to develop a feel for when they're sore and when they're not, you go and do those five sets of squats and you increase the repetitions per set. 
You can go for one set of you can go for five sets of squats or one set of squat with one squat. Everything by this point is progress. If you are the guy who is doing ab workouts because he wants to lose belly fat and thinks that training his abs will melt his fat away, you are on the wrong path. You need to train exercises that make you sweat. I know it's uncomfortable to move a lot when you're fat. I know how it feels, trust me. I hated burpees, I hated it all. It always used to hurt in my knees when I jumped, but it helped me. You need to do heavy compound movements. You need to make your body sweat. You need to make your body comfortable and actually used to training and to releasing the energy that it has stored. Now, how does your body store energy and why? It stores energy because it doesn't have the feeling, it doesn't have the confidence that you will give him enough calories, enough energy in the future. If you feel in business, I won't have enough of this in the future, then you store it and you don't sell it. But if you know my distributor is a good distributor, he will give me this stuff every single week, enough, you will sell as much as you can. And this is what you need to do. You need to put out as much energy as possible and you need to store as little as possible. And what makes, what makes your body store energy is laziness, low testosterone and insulin. Insulin is triggered by every single processed food and by sugar. And not only by sugar, but by sweet things mainly. Sweet and processed makes you fat. Tell me one thing that is sweet and processed and sweet or processed that doesn't make you fat if you eat enough of it. Sweet and processed, for example, is pizza. Pizza has a lot of sugar in it. And if you eat pizza from, not, not, not like from the pizza bakery or something or self-made pizza, which also exists, don't get me wrong, but pizza that you simply put in the oven and it gets made right at your home, that pizza is bad for you. Because with that pizza, your body will get an insulin response to that. And then if you don't use the energy of that pizza, then you will go into an energy low. And then your body will store all the fat and all the bad things that are in there. It will store all the energy because insulin has two jobs. It has the job of giving you energy and of storing energy after you're done using it. So when you're right before expanding energy, eat some sugar, fine, but make sure it's natural sugar, which we're gonna to come to in the next point. If you eat sugar, your insulin spikes because sugar is sweet. Don't make the mistake of saying, I'll drink zero sugar soda. It's fake. It's literally the biggest scam humanity ever fell for. Or not ever fell for, there are certainly bigger scams that humanity fell for, not to mention any of them. But Diet Coke will not have any fucking use for you. Diet Coke is a lie because it is still sweet and you still get an insulin response. And if you drink it with food, you will store the energy of that food. Because what these things usually do is they make you hungry, don't they? There are three hormones we need to worry about. Ghrelin, leptin, and insulin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. It's the hunger hormone that responds to your brain and that tells your brain, hey, we're hungry, we need to eat. Leptin hormone is the hormone that you get if you, if you say, I'm pumped for the workout session. I want to work out and let's go expand some energy. And getting your leptin signaling right is very, very important for this. Your leptin signal is influenced by two things. Your gut microbiome, which is basically the thing that your body craves, right? If you eat enough of something, your body will crave it, which is also a reason why you keep stuck in this sugar eating, sugar addicted thing. And I'll tell you a tool how to solve that in just a second. If you get more of this, I want to expand energy, that's good. 
because then your body is willing. Then it's the sign of, I have reprogrammed my body. Then you just need to stay on track and your gut microbiome will change and then you can just eat whatever you want. I eat whatever I want every single day throughout the entire year and I stay slim because I want the good food because my gut microbiome has been programmed by my eating habits in a way in which it makes me crave healthy foods. And ghrelin, the funny thing about ghrelin is it doesn't spike when you have hunger. Ghrelin doesn't go up like this, but it rather goes like this. Ghrelin spikes at eating times. This is why you can condition your dog to eat at 12 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can condition your dog, have hunger right there. And even if you don't give him the food there, you've probably seen this experiment, he will still go to the place where the food usually is. And humans work in the same way. Pavlovian conditioning has proved this. You condition yourself to do certain things. You're conditioning your body to crave food at 1 p.m. You're conditioning your body to crave chocolate. You're conditioning your body to crave sweet things and therefore you're stuck in this stage. So let me remove this burden of your bad gut microbiome by this. But first, if you've been here for this long, if you're watching this long into the video, you're probably either a subscriber or someone who I've helped. So if you would do me a favor, you could write in the comments what you are so a subscriber or a non-subscriber and the reason you haven't subscribed yet or the reason you have subscribed. And if you want something, if you want to pray something, if you want something more or less on this channel, you could always write it in the comment and 100% of the time, if you're not a stupid guy, I will change it for you because this channel is made to help you. Now to the gut microbiome. I've said it couple minutes ago probably and the gut microbiome changes through healthy eating habits and this is where I need to break your thoughts of oh this video is a magic pill it is to some extent because I've told you some things that no one has ever taught you no one has ever taught you eat fat to lose fat everyone has always told you eat margarine which is actually bad for your margarine by the way kills your liver because there are trans fats in there that line your liver and everything um, but they've told you low fat, low carb, low calories, basically eat nothing, but it hasn't helped you. This is the reason you clicked on this video and I hope it helped you. If it did, go ahead, give the video a like. So your younger self, the guy who didn't know what I've told you in this video knows or gets this video recommended. I hope you see why I'm asking you to, to like, I don't care about likes that much, but likes boost the algorithm. And if you boost the algorithm for this video, then the guy who looks for diet advice right now gets this video recommended to him because it got a few likes more. So you can literally help someone else, not by creating a video like me, but you can literally help someone else, your younger self, basically, by giving this video a like and boosting it for the algorithm so your brother can see it. Now to the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is changed by discipline and you need discipline for this. So let me not give you this thing of, oh, you need discipline and the video ends. <laughs> let me give you a tool on how to maximize discipline and how to make discipline easier. I've talked about this a million times before and I'll just link a video in the info card above if you want detailed stuff on this, but I quickly breeze through it in this video. The reason you need discipline to eat correctly is because everything else is more fun for you. Going to watch porn is more fun for you than eating the right food. Everything is more fun for you than going to the gym. Therefore, you need discipline for the gym. If the gym is on a, is on a fun level of five and your usual life is on a fun level of seven or eight, just, the gym will feel hard for you. If eating correctly is at a three, it will too be hard for you. And many people try to make eating more fun. They try to push up those low fun things and it doesn't work because you're trying to climb a mountain that never ends. 
you're trying to reach the end of the Stairmaster. And the Stairmaster, if you don't know, it's basically an eternal stairway. You cannot reach the end of that. That's the Stairmaster in the gym. What I tell people when they ask me how to have more discipline is, I tell them, make your life less fun. <laughs> it sounds stupid and it sounds kind of horrible to say this, but make your life more grounded. Watch videos of people in nature. I've uploaded many, many relaxation things. If you replace your regular YouTube consumption with those videos of simply me sitting in nature and meditating or of me talking in nature, you will first of all learn something and second of all, you'll not spike your dopamine as much. Dopamine lowers discipline if it's there in excess. You need to have a lower dopamine baseline for things to be fun. Because if we change your dopamine baseline, if we change where you are basically always at, then you will become more happy. If your life is at a two of happiness, then eating will be at a three. Now there is one exception or two exceptions for that matter because the scale doesn't work like that. You can have a shit life and still not have the discipline to eat correctly because then food is the most fun thing in your life and then you're trying to, trying to climb to that rank. I'd like to introduce to you delayed and instant gratification. Instant gratification is what I just described to you. Everything is below your fun level because you're seeking activities that are above your fun level. You always crave the things that are above your fun level because they feel good to you. It feels good to you watching Instagram reels because it's above your fun level. It feels good to you to eat cream pie because it's above your fun level. It feels good to you to jerk off because it's above your fun level. Now, what if we say we're gonna decrease your fun level? Now you might think I'm gonna become depressed but no, we're not gonna lower it forever. We're gonna lower your fun level in the next two weeks, and I'm about to tell you the plan I'm about to put you on. We're gonna lower your overall fun level for two weeks, and then you're gonna work hard on the things that are above it. You're gonna work hard on the hard things that are now fun for you, like the gym, eating healthy, and all these things. And then they will too rise up so beforehand, they stayed the same and your happiness just grew and fell because watching Instagram reels doesn't make you more jacked in the gym, obviously. But if you make the gym, but, but if we say your happiness is here right now and over the next two weeks, it, it is that fast. Trust me, it is that fast. You can fix your life in two weeks. Believe in yourself. If we go with your happiness level down here, then we are below your gym. And then the gym is fun. And then we go to the gym more because it's more fun. And then you become jacked. And then your life becomes more fun. And then you go to the gym more because you're jacked. And now the gym is even more fun. And now we go and now you make even more progress. And this is how delayed gratification works. And this is what you need to do. Delayed gratification are things that are unfun and unrewarding right now, but that you feel essentially kind of proud and grateful for at the end of the day. And there, is, and there are two practices that make this two week period easier and that actually give you something to do. Because if you just cut out all the things you did back then, you will just have a void of time and you'll be bored and you will regress. You will repent to your, to your usual habits. You will go back to watching Instagram. You will go back to eat the bad food. I have went through it hundreds of times. Tomorrow I'm gonna change, tomorrow I'm gonna change. These are the activities that will fill your day. You will read in the Bible every single day, three chapters of the next two weeks, three chapters. Don't lie to yourself, don't cheat. Then you're gonna go to the gym and do something. You're gonna go there and you're gonna go there as slow as you reasonably can, right? If you can go there by bus, Go there by bus, even if you have a car. Make the time investment big. So when you're at the gym, you feel like, okay, the next bus is coming in an hour. I might as well train. Versus if you're there with your car, you might think, I'm done with training. I don't need to do cardio. I can just drive home. No, 
go there with something that has fixed times to it. You cannot miss the bus. If you miss the bus, you need to take the next one. So go there by bus if there's not like fucking stabbings in your area or something. But if you're not in danger of literally getting stabbed in your neighborhood, if you use the bus, then use the bus. Because like I said, it has set times and when and you might as well take the next one and do some cardio, right? Then, besides reading in the Bible and going to the gym, you are going to meditate for at least five minutes every single day. And meditation works like this. You sit back and you think the thought to yourself, I don't need to think right now. You relieve yourself of every single thought and you simply focus on the breath. Now, if you fail, don't give up. Everyone fails on meditation. I failed millions of times on meditation and failing on meditation is essentially giving up, but failure on meditation is thinking a thought. And as soon as you're thinking a thought, as soon as you're getting lost in thought, you come back to the breath. And this is what will build the focus. This is a delayed gratification activity. And then you will also journal on the things that make you grateful. Because if you know what makes you grateful, then you will know what makes you grateful after you've done it. You don't, and you won't think about what makes me happy because happiness is right now, gratitude is in the future. You won't think about what makes me happy right now. You will think about what made me grateful. So you're gonna sit down every single evening or even better, morning, because in the morning you're less emotionally attached to the past day and you're gonna write about what you're grateful for. You can do this on your phone, on your computer. I think it works best on a high quality journal, but just a little hint for you, just use paper and a pencil, you'll be fine. You simply write, I am grateful, 10 times, 20 times, however many times you want to, and you write because, after it, you write, I am grateful because, I am grateful for, I was grateful while I was doing this thing. And you can write everything, no matter how small on there. There's nothing cringe to write in your gratitude journal. There's nothing that is overly stupid to write in there. Listen, I have wrote in gratitude journals. I am grateful I woke up from that dream. I am grateful that I touched a tree today. I am grateful that I didn't jerk off today. I wrote all these things in my gratitude journal. And this is the reason I am here right now, because I noticed these are the things I'm grateful for. Let's do them again today or tomorrow. And that's basically it. This is how you fix your life. This is how you fix obesity and mental health issues. Now have a nice day. Enjoy your journey. May the Lord bless you.